Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and this is all about my life after gastric bypass surgery. In today's video, I recently went on a work trip and it made me think of some tips that I have when it comes to traveling, especially if you're going to an airport after you've had surgery. And maybe some things to keep in mind, or at least things that I found <laughs> helpful when I'm traveling. after surgery, we feel really lost and we're not entirely sure how to do certain activities that seemed pretty routine before and kind of have to change after surgery. <laughs> or sometimes maybe they were really big hassles like traveling and going to an airport and you're just not entirely sure how to optimize that. And as I was getting ready for my recent work trip, I realized that I certainly have different ways that I approach traveling and going through airports now that I've had surgery. And especially Especially now that it's been a couple years since then and I kind of know <laughs> what to expect and what my body and and what my, my needs are so I wanted to share just a few of the tips that came to mind when I was preparing for and traveling for my trip recently But before I jump into that, I just want to say a quick thank you if you're a returning subscriber. Thank you so much for continuing to support my channel and come watch my videos and engage with me. It's my favorite part every week. And if you're not yet a subscriber, but you find yourself coming back to my videos or you like the content that I'm putting out and my perspective after surgery, just go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you get notified whenever one of my videos goes live. And I also want to say a quick thank you to the channel members. The memberships are relatively new on my channel and I'm trying to get some new information out there and get some uh, new engagement and stuff going on that side of things. So if you're interested in supporting the channel in that way, go ahead and hit the blue join button under this video or the link in the description and it will tell you a breakdown of all the things to expect if you join the memberships on the channel. Okay, so let's get into some of the tips that I thought about while I was preparing for my trip. Always make sure to bring snacks with you. One of the things that I do even when I'm not traveling to the airport is I always make sure that I have snacks on hand in my bag in case I get hungry or in case other things happen and uh, I find myself in a situation where I'm in dire need of something to eat. What I've packed in my backpack today are things like a bag of dried, oh no, these are popcorn, I have some uh, cup pop grain-free snacks. I have protein bars. I have sweets so that I don't run into a situation where I don't have an appropriate sweet if I have a sweet tooth. Same with the Atkins bars. There's a bag of dried apples. I'm gonna put some jerky in here and a granola bar. There's a whole bunch of different types of things that you can bring with you in different situations. In this situation, because it's an airport, I have to make sure that there are no liquids. I'm burning my egg. I'm still recording. In this situation, I am going to an airport, so I have to be careful with things like liquid. I can't take certain snacks with me, and I won't really have an easy access to a cooler. Sometimes I bring a cooler bag with me if I'm going on road trips or I'm just traveling for work. In this situation, I am not going to be bringing a cooler bag. So things like cheese and meat and yogurts um, are not going to be coming with me on this trip. So a lot more shelf stable snacks and items, but still I focus on trying to have high protein snacks if I can, because they're the most satisfying and they're going to keep me fuller longer and give me you know, more out of it than just snacking on some Cheez-Its or something. Along the same lines of food, I, love i'm a it's a guilty pleasure i love eating crappy food at airports um but in some situations i just really want to avoid it one because it costs a lot of money and two there's not great options now in this situation the seattle airport does have a, an excellent salad place it is a a high protein salad that is really not bad for you it's like and it's delicious, uh, but it's super expensive. The line is usually really long. And ultimately, I can't get one small enough to make any sense. You know, I have so much extra food. So I'm going to go ahead and skip it, even though, you know, I dream of this salad sometimes. And I'm going to make myself food 
substantial food, not just snacks, that I can pull out when I'm hungry, um, either on the way to or while I'm at the airport. So what I chose to make today are Spam Musubis. They're one of my favorite snacks, Hawaiian snacks, and they're just so like portable and really easy to take with you when you want something substantial. So I'm gonna walk you through making a couple of those. So if you've never had Spam Musubi before, it is kind of like a Hawaiian sushi. <laughs> so it starts with a sheet of nori. And I personally make these so that they really have a, a, just a thin layer of rice in them um, because I have found not only do I like the ratio better that way, but I just can't handle as much rice, uh, you know, as, as maybe these would traditionally be made with. So I just do a thin layer of rice in the bottom. And then I go in with this uh, furikake rice seasoning. It is a Japanese seasoning. And that goes right on top here. Oh, that's a big chunk. And then I made these this morning. They are the Spam Slices with um, basically cooked in a homemade teriyaki kind of sauce. One of those goes on top here. And then finally, I really like these uh, personally with egg, so I always make sure to put a slice of egg on top of mine. A little extra protein, a little extra something. It makes it a little more substantial as well. And so then I've got this fancy little <laughs> masubi maker. Push it down nice and tight. And I actually kind of did this wrong already, but they're very forgiving. And then from there, you want to wrap it up in the rest of the nori. This is where I kind of did it wrong because I actually have it on the wrong part of the nori, but that's okay. I'll have a little overlap here. And there you go. So what I will do is then wrap this nice and tight in some plastic wrap and put it in the fridge. I'm gonna pack a, a few of them together and grab it with me and have it in my bag so that when I get hungry later, I've got some masubis. my experience, some people love or hate nori, and I'm kind of in between. So I will use it. Um, I, I do like nori enough to eat this, but I will always trim off the extra. <laughs> okay, so here are my finished masubis. I went with four of them. Just seemed like the right amount to make with the ingredients that I had. And I'm going to put them in this little bag so that they are easy for me to dig out of my bag and keep track of. And I'm going to keep these in the fridge until I leave for the airport. When you are going to the airport, always make sure that you are bringing an empty water bottle. So this one I took hiking with me and I realized I really need to clean it before I take it with me. Um, but always make sure that you are bringing a water bottle, an empty one, in your bag. You can take it through security and then you can fill it up at water bottle stations in the airport uh, or various locations. That way you don't have to buy water past security or you don't have to rely on, uh, you know, finding Gatorade or something like that. I've also asked them on the plane if they could fill this up with the bottled water that they have on the plane. So um, there's a lot of different reasons why you would want to make sure that you bring a water bottle to make sure that you're staying hydrated. And it doesn't have to be a fancy hydro flask. You can just bring an empty plastic water bottle too. So P TSA pre-check was really awesome. It took me less than five minutes to go through. I didn't have to take anything off. I just threw everything in my bag and put it through and walked through a metal detector. So, so far that was totally worth the money. 
and uh, as I was walking to my gate, I remembered I have a first class ticket. I managed to grab the first leg first class, so I have access to editing Stephanie here. I, a couple of times in my footage, didn't realize that when I switch the camera from front facing to back facing, it cuts off a significant portion of what I say. So I'm gonna pop in here a couple of times to clarify. Because of my first class ticket with Alaska Airlines, I actually had access to the Alaska Airlines lounge, which I pretty much never get to go to. So that was pretty cool. I was able to get myself a cup of soup and um, grab a granola bar and put it in my bag in case I needed anything for later, fill up my water uh, bottle with some ice water, it was a really nice way uh, to to get my morning started that I completely forgot I had access to. With the whirlwind of yesterday's travel, I did not finish the tips video. So here are some of the last things that I think are really important when you are traveling and going to an airport. I always try, if I can, to bring some protein shakes with me. So when it comes to the protein shakes, can I get along without them and without having to bring them, especially if you're trying to avoid checking a bag and now all of a sudden you're trying to bring liquid with you so you need to check a bag? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can get away with not bringing those with me. Yeah, I can. I don't have to have a protein shake every morning, but my body really does prefer to have that first thing in the morning before I really delve into any food. And it is some way that I can always make sure that I'm getting enough protein when I'm traveling and I'm out and about. So I always try to remember if I'm checking a bag that I make sure that I'm bringing protein shakes. Also on top of everything, you need to make sure that you are still taking your vitamins when you're traveling. So I do have these cases that I have always had and they do detach. So I'm able to just bring the ones that I need and I always make sure that I'm organized and I have all the vitamins that I need for my trip. Also, another tip is that I always bring a water enhancer with me. So that way, in case I want something other than just bottled water or just water while I'm out and about, I want just something to make sure that I'm staying hydrated. This is something really easy to throw in your bag and have with you. And I've haphazardly thrown all of my clothes out from my suitcase on to the sofa here, but one of the things that I wanted to mention was to make sure that you bring layers. In most situations where I used to be warm, I am now very cold. And I know that it's quite common for people to feel cold after surgery. So whenever you're traveling, especially on a plane, I used to be really warm on planes and more often than not, I have to wear a light jacket or something while I'm traveling. So make sure you bring layers, make sure you have some sort of light jacket or a hoodie. That way, no matter where you're going, you do have the ability to stay warm because I even wore my hoodie while I was in Hawaii. The early mornings were just brisk enough that I was actually cold and the same with the late evenings. So I get cold a lot more easily and I make sure that I'm always bringing more layers than I necessarily think I might need. Well, this is what happens when you're in the middle of traveling and doing a whole bunch of different stuff all at the same time and realize that you never filmed an outro or any sort of coherent ending to this video. Those are the tips that came to mind while I was literally in the middle of packing for and in the middle of my travel. And I'm wondering if there are pieces of advice or some tips that you have in terms of how how to prepare for travel, how to prepare for being at an airport, being completely, maybe not completely, but significantly out of control when it comes to, you know, what you might be eating in certain events or different things going on. What are the different tips that you have that makes that a little bit easier? I hope the little tidbits that I provided have been helpful. And as always, I hope you stay happy and healthy and always look at the big picture. And I will see you guys in the next one.